What is up my friends? Get ready to load up on some alpha. Today we dive right into part 2 of Gavin Wood's talk on XCM, the secure language that connects Polkadot pair chains. In part 1, we broke down Gav's rationale behind Parity's role in developing Polkadot and listened in to his rallying cry for the ecosystem. Today, we get into the details of XCM and what's to come in the upcoming iterations of Datsama's secure messaging language. XCM, if you're not familiar with it, it is a language. It's a language that allows consensus systems to like make themselves understood between each other. Consensus systems, not just necessarily chains. Chains are the obvious first consensus system, but it, it works with other consensus systems as well. Basically, any data structure that is held in consensus. So it can work, for example, with smart contracts. What's XCM? How does it relate to XCMP? XCMP is a bit like the phone system, right? It's a means of getting a message message from one point to another. In fact, in XCMP's case, it's a, a means of getting a message between sibling parachains that happen to exist under the same relay chain. XCM is a message form. It's like a language. It's like English. English is spoken on the phone system. You can speak English whether you're on a phone system, whether you're face to face, whether you're on a video call. It doesn't really matter. It's still English. This English can be spoken across multiple mediums listed here, meaning XCM can be used in multiple different ways. Most interestingly, as a secure messaging between substrate-based chains and smart contracts. And as XCM has upgraded some through the years, Gavin reveals the details in the most recent upgrade to XCM, version 3. XCM version 3. What's, uh, what are the main changes? Well, there's some changes that make it a more programmable um, language. There's some changes that make it easy to split up applications across different shards, different parachains, and there's also changes that make it easy, or make it even possible, for it to be used over bridges between different consensus systems. Bridges between different consensus systems? Sir, does he mean bridging outside Polkadot using XCM? The bridging features are a little bit more um, interesting. From my point of view, they're more extensive. And essentially, they allow for the possibility of building very uh, sophisticated multi-hop systems where you can connect bridges and you can have parachains talk to talk across to another parachain that itself is a bridging parachain that goes off to another ecosystem that can then forward a message on into maybe another parachain in that ecosystem and then eventually maybe make its way down into a smart contract chain. XCM uh, has this abstraction called a multi-location. Multi-location is basically a location held in consensus. A multi-location example might be maybe uh, the Polkadot relay chain, right? It could be a specific smart contract uh, that exists um, on Moonbeam. It may be a user account that exists on statement. These are all locations in, held in consensus. And this becomes very difficult if the location is on a whole different consensus system. Like it's easier, we can imagine like, oh well, if I'm a parachain, then my parent location is the relay chain. And then if I wanna sort of go to another parachain, then there's like a child location that is that parachain. We can start thinking of it in terms of like directory hierarchies, it becomes quite easy. But it's difficult if we have to jump over into another ecosystem. Um, there isn't really a way that we can have that be relative. It turns out that uh, one of the conceptual additions that we have now is the universal location. The universal location is a consensus location that is defined as being the parent of all locations that are themselves providing global consensus. So now we have this concept of a universal location that conceptually sits above consensus systems and will eventually allow for bridging outside Datsama using XCM. This basically gives consensus systems a point of reference to work from. Whew. The first and one of the most important things is the functional decomposition of the relay chain. What we want to do is make the relay chain something that actually does what, it, what it's named after, that it really just does manage these parachains and act as like a, a central point for make, making sure messages that go between them and securing the parachains. This means it really shouldn't be doing stuff like managing governance. It shouldn't be managing validator, nominator relationships. It shouldn't be managing, you know, moving 
uh, tokens between accounts. This is all not to do with the primary thing of securing parachains and making sure that they can pass messages between each other safely. So what do we do? Well, we take the obvious approach and we say, let's make a parachain. Let's make a parachain for each of these different functions that we don't want sitting on the relay chain. That's what's the beauty of Polkadot, that we can do this. But because at the moment, these different functions can assume that they're all on the same blockchain, it means that they can sort of use the different features. Sir, did you catch that? The vision of Polkadot for more than five years ago is finally coming together. With XCMV3, we'll be able to combine the functions of different pair chains to form a robust end product. Next, he reveals a new component of the upcoming governance overhaul. The Polkadot Fellowship exists as a sort of on-chain membership organization that helps oracleize the information regarding the safety and time criticality of on-chain upgrades. Essentially, it's like a uh, it's an expert oracle. Now, there's no real reason to have an expert oracle that you know is is expert in the Polkadot protocol and have it have two different ones, one for Polkadot and one for Kusama, given that they both utilize the Polkadot protocol. It's like the expert set is going to be based the same. So it would be cool if we could bridge this. Well, I mean, we want to bridge Polkadot Kusama. You know, this is already an ongoing effort, soon to be deployed. But wouldn't it be cool if we could use XCM to ensure that this Oracle functionality that exists, wherever it exists, whether it's Polkadot Kusama, can be oracleized onto the other network so we don't need to duplicate efforts. And uh, indeed, this is one of the things that XCM v3 is intended to solve. Another interesting one would be like maybe a, a Kusama parachain that holds dot on statement, able to actually make votes in a Polkadot referendum. This is the sort of interesting cross ecosystem functionality that bridged XCM can facilitate. This isn't just about having some tokens be able to be passed. Whew. Teasing cross ecosystem dabs and functions? Thank you, sir. And even Parity is thinking about XCM v4. But Gav then pivots to what XCM can't solve and what solutions are available. But he starts with the problem. A follow user wants to move AUSD, which is native to Akala, to Moonbeam and execute a smart contract or other function on this chain. Some have asked if this can be done in one step, but it can't. It must take two. Listen in to understand why. Well, why don't we just do it in one step? Why doesn't, uh, why doesn't Fala, on behalf of its user, just basically tell a Carla, transfer the AUSD, send it on to Moonbeam, let Moonbeam know, and then have Moonbeam execute this smart contract action directly. Is there not something that we can add to the XCM language or some extrinsic that we can add to a runtime, some special transaction or something that can do this in one step? And the answer is no. XCM cannot solve this. The reason XCM cannot solve this is it's not a language issue. The issue is with the trust relationship. There is a messaging, the first message, because we're doing a reserve asset transfer, because Akala is where the AUSD sits. Fala must ask Akala to transfer it over to Moonbeam. That's the, that's the first message. Fala asks Akala to do something, sends a message there. Now, Akala is the only one that Moonbeam can trust to tell it that it's received the AUSD. So the second message must be from Akala to Moonbeam. That's fine, that's how it works. But then we want to do some contract execution on Moonbeam on behalf of the Fala user. Who's gonna tell Moonbeam? Moonbeam to do this. Moonbeam doesn't trust Akala to tell it what it should be doing on behalf of Fala. Why would it? It's like, it's Fala's user. Why would Moonbeam trust Akala to tell it to do something on behalf of Fala's user? No, doesn't make any sense. So there must be a third channel here. There must be a third message that is directly from Fala to Moonbeam. And this is why it has to be in two steps. And it's nothing that we can add to XCM to prevent this. So XCM isn't able to fix every issue, but there is something that they've been working on to improve UX and trust relationships. Well, the answer is Spree. So I've talked about Spree in the past in a, in a fairly circumspect fashion. I wanna just reference it here today to point out that there are real ecosystem use cases that teams are finding they want to be solved, that can be solved, and they can only be solved in this way. What Spree does is it allows trust-free remote logic execution. Basically what it means is in Polkadot, we can make sure that each of these parachains adheres 100% according to the logic that it sets for itself. 
We can make sure that no transactor can cheat the chain that it's being transacted on. We can make sure that even the chain itself cannot cheat its own governance or its own rules for upgrading. But what we can't do is make one chain be able to trust that another chain won't upgrade itself and somehow stop working in the same way. This is just fundamentally chains are sovereign entities. If they want to upgrade and, I don't know, eat everyone's money that happens to be sitting on the chain, they can. It wouldn't be a great look for the chain, but it's, they are sovereign entities. There is nothing that Polkadot can do. I mean, in part, it's an unsolvable solution in general, because how could anyone other than the chain's logic itself know how best to describe the expectations that people have en masse about the chain? In some sense, code is actually law. He describes Spree as little bits of unchangeable business logic that chains can trust aren't tampered with. What does this enable? Let's go back to the Fala example from earlier. Fala, rather than sending directly to Akala, would actually send to this special, protected little bit of logic that sits next to Akala, but that Akala can't touch, and that guarantees certain expectations regarding what will happen with ongoing routing, making sure that, for example, if a part of this message was destined for Moonbeam with the authorization of the Fala user, it will be without any kind of tampering or changing be forwarded onto Moonbeam and Moonbeam will be told that it does indeed come from Fala. And because it's the Moonbeam special module that is interpreting it, it knows the Akala special module could not have tampered with it because it knows that Akala has no control over the logic of this module. It's clear that Polkadot continues to strive towards the vision of less trust, more truth, with each new development all in a decentralized manner. There's even improvements to the decentralization via Governance 2.0, and we'll dive into that one next time. Have a great night, everybody.